Hello Internet and welcome again to another video tutorial. Uh, this time we are going to cover congruence. We won't go too deep on this. I'm just going to scratch the surface. I'm going to define what congruence is in the context of modular arithmetic and then uh, give a couple of examples. After that we'll just have a look at some properties of congruence. Now, before I start, I'm going to be assuming that you're familiar with modular arithmetic. If not, please uh, look up modular arithmetic in my uh, YouTube video channel. I have a video on that, just a, a, a sort of overview of modular arithmetic. I'm going to be assuming that you are also familiar with the mod operator, with the that division and the, the remainder, with uh, uh, integer division in general. Again, if not, please have a look at uh, my YouTube channel. There are videos on modular arithmetic, on the mod operator, on uh, you know prime numbers and co-primeness and things like that. Now, let's go straight ahead to the contents of my slides in this video. Now, congruence. Um, given two integers A and B, let's say we have any two integers, so we, we, we know integer numbers, no fractions, you know, minus infinity, minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on and so forth to uh, positive infinity. So, two integer numbers, let's say A and B, and another integer n, with n now, is larger than 0. So, n is a positive number, it's greater than 0. So, we have three integers, A, B, and n. n needs to be greater than 0. We say that a is congruent congruent to B modulo n, remember this, A is congruent to B uh, modulo n, or we use this sort of equivalence symbol, so this reads A is congruent to B in modulo n if the value of A minus B, if we subtract A minus B, the value, the result of that is divisible by n, i.e. if A minus B is a multiple of n. So again, we have three integers, a, b, and n, and n needs to be greater than zero, so one, two, three, or, and above. We say that a is congruent to b modulo n, written like that with the equivalence sign, so a, that reads, a is congruent to b modulo n, if the value of a minus b, so what we do is, if we want to test for congruence, what we do is, we have the three numbers and then we do a minus b or, or, or b minus n and we check if that is a multi if the result of the subtraction is a multiple of n so the idea here is that a minus b is sort of k times n for some value of k so it's a multiple of 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 n so if a was for example uh, 20 and b was 10 and n was 5 if i do a minus b 20 minus 10 is 10 and 10 is a multiple of 5 because for k times n k would be 2 and n is 5 so 2 times 5 is 10 that means a and b or that means 20 and 10 are congruent I'm oh, sorry uh, 20 is congruent to 10 modulo 5 I hope that makes sense so again two numbers a and b are said to be congruent in modulo n if so this is just another way of saying it uh, that a modulo n equals b modulo n. So for, for the 20, 10, 5 example, a is 20, b is 10, n is 5, we said that 20 minus 10 equals 10, and 10 is a multiple of 5, that therefore 20 and 10 are congruent modulo 5. We Another way of checking is we can check 20 mod 5 and 10 mod 5. If they're equal, then that means 20 and 10, 20 is congruent to 10 in modulo 5, so that, that's the idea here, just so another way of saying it, that 20, A mod N, so 20 mod 5 uh, is 0, and B mod 5, uh, 10 mod 5 is again 0, so they're equal, that means A is congruent to B, or 20 is congruent to 10 modulo 5, again, remember I'm assuming you're familiar with the mod operator, if not, then watch my video on uh, modular arithmetic, so these numbers here, a, I'm sorry, 4 is congruent to 9, 9 is congruent to 14, it's congruent to 19, it's congruent to minus 1, it's congruent to minus 6, mod 5. The reason is that if you subtract any of these two, any of these numbers, the result will be a 
multiple of 5, either positive or negative. So if I do, for example, um, 19 minus minus 1, that's 20, and it's a multiple of 5, over if I do minus 1 minus 19, that's minus 20, and that's a multiple of 5, because minus 4 times 5 is minus 20. I hope that makes sense. Um, 73 is congruent to 4 modulo 23, 21 is congruent to minus 9 modulo 10. If you compute 73 mod 23 and 4 mod 23, they will be equal. They will be equal according to this concept here. Again, if we compute uh, 21 mod 10, that's 1, and minus 9 mod 10, that's 1. Again, remember when the negative, when the uh, when a is negative, when the number is negative, then we add multiple of the modulo. So we add 10 to minus 9, that's 1. And when a is positive, we subtract multiples of 10. So 21 minus 10 minus 10, that's also 1. And that means these two numbers are uh, congruent modulo 10. Again, go back to my video on modular arithmetic to learn about the mod operator. Some properties of congruence, if we have four numbers, let's say a, b, c, and d, and a positive integer m, so remember here we mentioned that n needs to be larger than 0, m again is the modular, here, there it was n, here it's m, we, such that, for example, a is congruent to b modulo m, and c is congruent to d modulo m so we have this condition here that okay m is positive m is uh, let me just write that down quickly there that m is greater than m is greater than zero sorry and um, a is congruent to b modulo m c is congruent to d modulo m then in modular arithmetic the following identities hold that for addition we can say a plus C is congruent to B plus D modulo M. A minus for subtraction, A minus C is congruent to B minus D modulo M. For multiplication, A times C, let's use a star for times, A times C is congruent to B times D modulo M. Um, for division, if I divide A, divide A over E is congruent to B over E is E is a, uh, <coughs> e is a positive integer now. That a over E is congruent to B over E modulo M over the GCD of M and E. The GCD is the greatest common divisor uh, divisor of M and N, GCD, and I have a video on that. Please look it up on my YouTube channel. I think I named the video the Euclidean algorithm for finding the GCD, the greatest common divisor of two integers. So E is a positive integer that divides a and b so e is a positive integer that divides a and b remember here we're speaking about uh, um, integer division so no fractions <coughs> and no remainder in this case uh, exponentiation if i raise a to power e and b to power e uh, here it says a to power e is congruent to b to power e modulo m where e is a positive integer again uh, another property of congruence but in general I'm sorry going back here I'm assuming that e, it's trivial for you now to work out any example for this as long as you're familiar with the mod operator and you understand the concept of congruence some other properties that um, if a is congruent to b modulo n then that implies that b is congruent to a modulo n yes so a is congruent to b modulo n implies that b is congruent to uh, a modulo n and I have actually spoken about that here when I said oh just to go over it again here I can say minus 1 is congruent to minus 6 modulo 5 or minus 6 is congruent to minus 1 modulo 5 because if I do this test here a mod n and b mod n the results will be the same for the two integers if I, even if I swap b e and a and b another one is that if I have, for example, A is congruent to B modulo N, and I have B is congruent to C modulo N, that means A is congruent to C modulo N. Yes, so we again had a similar example here, but now with multiple numbers, not three, so we, he, here we have A, B, and C, but here we have, you know, 4, 9, 14, 19, minus 1, and minus 6, any two of these uh, uh, integers are congruent modulo 5. I hope that makes sense. 
I the last video was too long. That this is why I tried to keep this one short. I hope uh, 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 everything is clear by now. And these things are very important. And by the way, you must have noticed now by, when I when we use modular arithmetic that the numbers we deal with are relatively small. These things are at the heart of our day-to-day -day life. At the heart of encryption, for example, in our uh, bank cards for. Uh, sending and receiving for signal transmission anything like that for encryption in general encryption and decryption these things are at the heart of that and hopefully they are making sense to you I'm explaining these in order to uh, get you familiar with modular arithmetic so we can explain how the RSA algorithm works and hopefully to get you started with encryption thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time